friends, welcome to another episode of Nobody Asked Us with Des and Kara, presented by TCS. Hey. <laughs> I nailed it. Still proud of that. Um, Kara Goucher, co-host, how you doing? I'm good, Des. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm um I got chatty fatigue almost a little bit at the front here. <laughs> Why? Because we've already been chatting for so long. We were mapped like my, I don't know. I, this is an interesting question. We can ask the audience to weigh in if people have noticed that my microphone has been problematic for like the last four shows. So we spend about 25 to 30 minutes tinkering with the cords and trying to get that to operate and it still has not worked. So um, apologies if my audio sounds poor, but Kara's running point on this show anyhow. So. No, I'm not. <laughs> Just nice try. Nice try. try. <laughs> um, so what's new with you? You just got back from calling indoors. How are you feeling about that? What was good? What was, I don't know, I don't want to say bad, but any thoughts? Yeah, well, I texted you that it felt like whiplash going from the marathon to the Milt Rose games. Because in the marathon, like your producers in your ear and they're like, we've got three and a half minutes to fill. Tell some stories. Tell me about what you're seeing right now. And then in Miller's, they'd be like, wrap it up. 10 seconds, five, Kara, be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, ah! <laughs> so from a work perspective, it was actually a little stressful, but in general, it's, it was good. I mean, the Milrose games were awesome. The performances were awesome. Indoor nationals was exciting because we have world championships in a couple of weeks. And I do really like track because it's short and it's quick and you get to see so much. I just had to, was coming off of the, you know, three hour broadcast where you have time to talk slowly and yeah to breath. think yeah, yeah to think before you have to quick say something yeah let me process and then say it um, right yeah do you feel like I, I've said this before with track is like it's just your first draft but you have to put it out there or like true. For marathon you can kind of think through some stuff so you can take long pauses um you're great though and I like it doesn't feel like a first draft because you're great at it but also I feel like the more experience you get um, but I can imagine going from the marathon to the track is like, like you said, whiplash. Where you're just oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. I was just like, what's happening? The, we're, we're finishing already? Okay. Okay. <laughs> when, when's my window? Here I go. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Paul. It's in there. <laughs> yeah. But it was good. I do love calling track because it is fun and quick. It just, yeah, I just wasn't ready for it. But so now I'm in the thick of it. Racing thoughts. I guess we should go back to Milrose, which I, we have a list. Um Indoors recap. So that that is Milrose. <laughs> You're just jumping right in here. I'm, I'm looking at the list. I'm going to bounce around. I have a full, this is, Kara did some uh, work. You got to go to the, uh, I hope I didn't give away your phone number on there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on there. It's not on there. Um, it says sent from your iPhone. Um, yeah. So you mapped out the whole show and then you're like, you lead it, but this is the grab bag. Uh, yeah. So. So just key notes for Chris. I feel like that might make the title. I like to punch in some stuff that might make the title later. Um, but we're going to go with Indra's recap. We'll start with yeah. Milrose. Uh, hot race, anything that you were like, that was so worth seeing. Um, and did any surprises from athletes? Um, well, I called the two miles and the, and the miles. And the women's two mile was exciting, but confusing because an athlete cut in right away, but then we didn't say it on air because we didn't know if she was going to be disqualified or not. Um, it was interesting to see Laura Muir kind of let her go the last three steps. Like yeah. Laura Muir is a person that like will kill herself. But then she said later that she saw, she knew she was going to be disqualified. So that was interesting to me. Alicia Munson continues to just be like, mm -hmm. Like she can just carry any pace forever. So I'm excited to see what she does in the 10K this year because she ran the the two mile under the American record. Um, and she did a lot of the work. Like she got out kicked in the end, but she did a lot of the work early on. And then in the men's two mile, it was interesting because Josh Kerr had said he was going for the world record there. And at first the field wasn't exceptionally deep. And then Grant Fisher entered like a few weeks out. And I think that that does change your mindset from like, if you're just going mm -hmm. for a record, I feel like you can take more risks than if you're like going for a record, but also there's someone you don't want to lose to in the race. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if Grant Fisher hadn't been there, the time might've even been a little bit faster because I think Kerr would have like risked a little bit more early on. But I yeah. think because Grant, and again, I haven't talked to either of them. This is just my own, my own two cents. Yeah. But it was like, because Grant was there, it was like, 
I knew Josh Kerr was like, I don't want to lose to him. So I have to now race in a way that's best suited for me to win this race. And if the record comes with that, great. And so that's kind of what happened is Grant Hill or Grant Hill, Grant Fisher. <laughs> like, who am I talking about? He stuck on the pacemaker. When the pacemaker fell away, he kept it going. You know, he came through the mile, I think, in 403 or something like that. But he kept it hot and kept it, kept it. And then Kerr went by him with. I don't even remember anymore. Maybe 300 to go, something like that. Yeah. Put three seconds on him in that time. So I was impressed by both of their efforts. And it, I think I've never chased a world record, but I do think chasing a world record while still wanting to win is a different situation than just chasing a world record. Yeah, uh, totally. I think it changes the dynamic dramatically. And it's like, can you do both in one race? Like that's such a much more difficult task. But if you're chasing the world record and then you just tee up somebody else to out kick you and get the world record. Right. Like that kind of stings a little bit. So it was, it was cool to see them, you know, Josh Kerr get both of those things done in one race. Um, I did see a, a post race interview where he was like, with eight laps to go, I was really hurting. And I was like, <laughs> I can't <laughs> fathom being in like the hurt locker and being like, okay, I, I'm halfway done. Yeah. Um, like, so he, he made it look e- not easy, but you know, he made it look like it was in the wheelhouse and you didn't see that pain until the last few laps. Um, yeah. Even was- then, like he did look like he was hanging on a little bit, but then when he moved, it was so quick and so like sure, you know, like he went by Grand Hill and immediately had a step and a half and like one move. And so when he went, it was really impressive. It was like, oh yeah, that'd be nice to have that like tool in your back pocket. Like even when I'm hurting, I can flip that switch and find my kick, you know? But, yeah. Yeah. And also Cole Hawker ended up third and he didn't get a lot of TV time because he was kind of off of them, but he moved up so well that second half. I I thought that was an impressive race out of him too. He also ran under, uh, well, Grant Hill, Grant Hill, why do I keep saying that? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> because I used to be in love with Grant Hill. This is something that's funny. I used to be wildly in love with Grant Hill and I would say I'm going to make the Olympic team just so I can meet him. And he got married at, and my sister's like, he got married. And I go, I don't care. I'm going to have an affair. We're going to get married. So anyway, I keep talking about, it. yes, Grant Hill, the basketball player. Um, Anyway. Wow. Grant that's sure. like some- Yeah. Like Stuff loved him. Came out. <laughs> this is this is when I knew I like, was in love with Adam Goucher because I took my natural born thriller Grant <laughs> Hill poster <laughs> off the wall and put Adam up, and I was like, it's official. Like I'm I'm moving on. Like me and Grant aren't going to work out. Anyway, wow. Right. So, just just a little tip. Get this all out now because I did not want you to be on an NBC broadcast. And being like, here goes Grant Hill. And everyone would be like, oh, she's, she's in I'm head probably space. going to now. <laughs> and you'd be like, she's fantasizing about her high school crush, her high school and college crush. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, anyway, Grant Fisher ran under the American record. And I'm pretty sure that um, Cole Hawker did, too, the, the old American record. Okay. That's something I have to look up. But that's, I mean, that's, a, I kind of like that because it's like, yeah. you know the places, but who cares about the time, right? Right. Yeah. No, he ran that's great. Cool. And then... And what else did I call the mile races? Ellie St. Pierre is everyone should be on alert because she broke her own American record in the indoor mile. And she's only 11 months out from having her son, Ivan. And I just think give her six more months. It's going to be, I mean, it's already exciting, but it's going to be really exciting. So she looked great. I can't believe I can't remember who got second. But I can't. And then <laughs> the men's mile. <laughs> <That's a gap. laughs> and the men's mile was, you know, it's so funny because a year ago, we I called Milrose and we were all fo- focused on Ollie Hoare and, and might yeah. he scare the yeah. world record in the mile. And Yard and Goose kind of came out of nowhere and won and scared the world record. And then this year it was like, he's here to set the world record. All the attention was on him. He ran great. He didn't get it, but he ran great. But it was like, uh, and I was like, wow, what a difference a year makes. Right. People are you know? deflated because you didn't get the <laughs> yeah. A year ago, we were all like, oh my God, he's the real deal. And this year, everyone was like, oh, that's too bad. Ah, darn it. Why didn't he run a little slower through halfway? It was just like, Gosh, wow. No. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what a difference like one year can make is pretty crazy, but he ran great. So I guess it'd be kind of interesting to talk about an Olympic year and like how much emphasis and energy do you put into indoor and like how much do you think that impacts somebody like Nagoose is or like it seems like the on track club is usually just like they knock Milrose out of the park and mm-hmm. they we had an American record and Nagoose runs really well and um but 
like you said, we felt a little bit deflated, but uh, like, do you think they're tempering expectations a little bit early on this year, just because they want to be really on fire? Like, Hey, we got to get ready for trials and then the games. And those are like the big goal. Like, do you think you change things around this year? I think a lot of people do. I do think that they thought he was going to get that record. I think they they said it. You know, he doesn't normally say stuff like that. Um, his coach, Dathan, it's nine, had said he was ahead of last year. So I think that that probably was a little bit of like, oh, I think they were out too hot through 800. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because Yard went on to win the USATF indoor 3K title less than a week later, and he's going to Scotland to compete in world championships. And so – like from my perspective, Yard just doesn't have a ton of experience at that most high, highest of high levels. And I feel like it, it might have cost him a medal at World Champs last year. It seemed like, and again, I haven't talked to him. So again, this is just me and my own observations. Yeah. Um, I think the start caught him off guard how aggressive it was. And he had such bad positioning and he spent the whole race trying to move his way up. And by the time the kicking started with 200 to go, he had just spent so much energy trying to find his way through. So I personally like seeing him go to World Indoors and get in more races like that because I think that's going to help him, right? Like you, like World Championship and Olympic Finals are different than other races. They're super tactical. They're super aggressive. And I think it's really cool that he's going to go do World Indoors. I do think it's funny that he's running the 3K and now Josh Kerr is too. Like neither of them want to risk a loss at their event. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if one of them, one of them, they can't both win. And obviously there's also an excellent field stacked against them, but they both can't win. And so then you can say, well, it was my off event, right? Right. But when we go down to the 15, like I guess. Yeah, that'll be different. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for Kerr, and I I don't want to weigh in too much because I'm not the coach, but it feels like. Oh, I'm not either. You can weigh in all you want. No, I have to put a, um, just like. I don't know, disclaimer on that. I am not his coach, and this is just my theory. Um, I think that they looked at what worked last year, and it worked so well. It just seems like almost carbon copy. Yeah. Like we're going to do the half in San Diego. We're going to do the Milrose 3, um, 2 mile. And so this is a little wrench in what 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 they had planned out, uh, but I like that he's going to compete. I mean, in having the goose in there. And really just a stellar field in general, world championship um, and home hometown for him. So that'll be really cool. And I think just race experience is really good. But this to the point is like it's off distance. And like this also wasn't my original plan. I added it. So there's right. a few things in there that you can go like, OK, like it doesn't count on my record quite as much if it doesn't go his way. But. Yeah, I think you're totally right. He did say at the press conference that last year worked so well, they wanted to basically just what you said, like mirror it again. And I think adding on the world championship is a little risky just from the fact of like that's it's different. It takes his indoor training out another couple of weeks. For him, there's a lot of pressure too. It's in, you know, it's in his home country, but I'm glad he's doing it. I think it's super good for the sport. Like Michael Michael Johnson was saying like, he's so pumped that Kerr and Nagus are going head to head and also like Bragg is in there. Like there's so many also like excellent athletes, but it's cool to, it'll be super cool to watch them. And even though it's not their regular event, it's, they're still really good. I mean, Nagus <laughs> is the American indoor record holder, right? So, um, I don't know. I think it's going to be really good. I'm excited about it. Time predictions. Do you think it'll go fast? Or do you think it'll be a kicker's race? I mean, I think it'll be a kicker's race, but I think it'll still be fast because I think they'll go so fast in those last three laps or what, which would be six laps. Cause it's so, in the track. Yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> so we, we did jump ahead a little bit of U S championships. Uh, we talked a little bit about Cole Hawker who came back in the mile. Do they do 15 in the mile? It's the mile. They run the 15 this year. Yeah. Of course. Um, how was that race? What did it look like? I mean, that's a good back-to-back stretch there for him. You know, it was interesting because um, the people at NBC were like, is Hobbs Kessler going to win? Because obviously he ran, he beat Jake Whiteman, ran that phenomenal 1500, I think 333 at New Balance. And then he was second to Nagoose at Milrose. And I think he ran 348 at Milrose. Um, 
And I was thinking, and I said this to my producer, I'm like, I don't know that I see him winning this, only, not because he's not talented enough to do it, but he just doesn't have that much experience, right? Like he went pro out of high school. He's kind of struggled to string together something consistent. And I feel like now we're starting to see him come into his own. And that's why I think it's so important that he's going to world championships because he doesn't have that championship experience like a lot of the other athletes do. And so I told my producer, I'm just going to pat myself on the back. I was like, I see Cole Hawker winning this because Cole Hawker is an excellent racer. Yeah. He is really good at like reading everything and knowing when to move. And we know he has a phenomenal last 150. And so um, that's kind of how it played out. It, there was a lot of pushing and shoving. It was a really messy race. But Cole Hawker really showed like, oh, no, I'm good, guys. And it's kind of funny because we would always talk about how good Cole Hawker was at the Tokyo Olympics. And I think he was only 19 maybe at the time. Yeah. Um, maybe he had just turned 20. But now it's like, oh, yeah, Cole Hawker, he's still just 22. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, he's had some bumps in the roads, but I'm, I, I'm excited to see what he can do now if he can stay healthy because I think he is a special athlete. But I was yeah. pumped for Hobbs Kessler to make it too. Like that's exciting too. I think that's a huge opportunity for Kessler. Like you said, I, like just getting in those races more frequently. Um, I was talking to Zach Panning a little bit. We obviously have talked about his race a number of times and he was like, yeah, the trials, like it was just different, you know, like I think I got a little too antsy and we talked about a few things and, and I was like, it's like, it's a little like, um, there's a quote from like Kittle or someone on the, the 49ers. It was like, playoff football is so different than regular season where you can have guys in the regular season that you see a couple of times a year. And it's like, well, they, you learn their tendencies. Like, well, they back off on this part because it gets a little hard. They don't play through them on these type of plays. Like you can see them kind of rock back on their heels. Like in playoffs, everything's on the line. Everybody plays every play a hundred percent for the mm -hmm. whole game. Like there's no more like, settling or waiting yeah. it's like when it's all on the line and that's the same thing with trials and championship races and you'll see that in the rounds of the trials you're going to see that and I think it's cool for Kessler to see that in the world championships and like get a taste for that like and I think the U.S. championships are probably the first like little glimpse of it I mean he's probably had it before he's done trials before but just getting in there more frequently and knowing it's not going to be like a diamond league or Mm -hmm. you know, a sound running thing. It's like, yeah, when things get hard in those races, like, eh, I just stand mm -hmm. back for a couple laps and then, and then rally, but everyone's full bore in these championship races. So good yeah. experience. I actually think our, the American men have a good chance of bringing home a medal or two because it's a little bit more open with, um, Ingebrigtsen's injured, Kerr's doing the 3000, Nagus is doing the 3000. I really like, I mean, again, I'm so glad Kessler is doing it just for his experience because I think he is the future in the event. But I do, I kind of see Cole Hawker coming home with some hardware. Yeah. Uh, who's in the field? Do we do we have full fields yet? Or is there any like um, They posted them today. Um, have so you studied me? No. I just saw him today because I was just wanting to see if we were sending another man in the 3000, uh, uh, if America was, because uh, only Nagus had the standard. But it looks like. Colin Hacker will get in on his rank on someone else's ranking, which we're going to talk about today. So <laughs> not his ranking, but an American ranking. And then you can swap someone since he finished second at USA. So, um, but the, the 3000 meter fields are really small at worlds this year. They're not doing any rounds. So because of that, the field size is only 15. And because of that, the standard was really tough. Like in the men's 1500 at USA's, everyone had the standard, but in the men's 3000, only one person had it. And that was yard. So yeah. I mean, I actually think the U.S. has a good chance. I, I don't see more than two people beating St. Pierre, right. if any. I mean, I'm sorry. She's in phenomenal shape. <laughs> I I don't see more than two people beating Yard and Goose. I don't see more than two people beating Cole Hawker. And the women's 1500, I feel, is probably the deepest event as far as like what Nikki Hiltz and um, Mackay. What's her first name? My God, Emily, maybe Mackay, but they're going to face, I feel like their, their fields are pretty deep, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, right. Nikki Hiltz is running like, Gamer, right? yeah, yeah. So I could see Nikki getting a medal too. So I don't know. I think it's going to be cool and good so, momentum leading into the Olympics. So what you're saying is we should all tune in and watch on NBC. You're going to call the races. <laughs> yeah. Who else is on the broadcast? 
Uh, Paul's play by play. Trey will be doing field. Um, I'll be doing distance, obviously. Otto will be doing sprints. I might get to call the eights with Otto again. I got to do that at USA's, which was really fun. Because I, I hang out with Otto all the time, but I never get to like actually like call something with him. Yeah. But that yeah, was fun you, to be able to call done that. The, You've done it once before with a three person? Well, I did it at pre and stunk it up. Like I did such a bad job, Des. It's so hard. <laughs> it's like, so hard. You said is like now cut into a third. Yeah. It's and so, like, and it's such a short race. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Sonia wasn't, Son, we won't see Sonia again until pre. So they, so Paul and Otto asked me if I'd come in on it. And it was super, I, I did better at this time than I did at pre, but at pre, I did such a bad job because there's, it's such a short race, three people on the call. It's the only event where we have three people on the call, except for the yeah. relays, you know? Right. You have so like, yes. and you're like, da, da, da. here's right. my thought. Yeah. But I think, I hopefully I'll get to do it at World Indoors and just get a little bit more practice. But that was the first, um, track race I called it was an 800 three person booth and I was like oh my Seriously? god <laughs> that's awful yeah. that is it's so awful. stressful I was like I'm gonna be awful at this and then I was <laughs> even worse <laughs> no but that is so hard three people calls are so hard and like I don't even know how it came to be that it was a three person call it's fun when you like sort of like feel it out and you like get a good rhythm um but it's just a totally like like you said, marathon to track to that oh, God, back yeah. to like to three thousand meters. You're like, I don't know what pace I'm supposed right. to be. <laughs> How many what's my word count here? Yeah. That's that's hard. So yeah. you. Um all right. So we've co- covered a couple of these things. Do you want to talk? Okay, I'm gonna give you some choices. Okay. Do you wanna talk? Okay, new long jump rules standards or oh i think we should do this first i'm cutting your question opportunity okay. here. um grant fisher ran grant hill <laughs> slash fisher. oh my god i can't even believe raced. i shared that story <laughs> raced during uh the u.s championships and if you look in the results you do not see him because he actually raced at bu uh ran a, a phenomenal 5,000 meters really close to the American record. What gives? Why are we doing it? Give me some rationale. How do you feel about it all? Huge, huge Grant Fisher fan. Not a huge <laughs> fan of this, but I understand why he did it. So he's, he was doing it because he wanted to practice the difference between the rounds at the trials and having to be sharp, you know, within five days. So I get all, I get all of the meaning behind it. And he almost set the American record, which certainly he would have had he had a little bit more help earlier on in the race. I don't love it because that same night, Yard Nagus ran the 3000 at the USATF championship. And I would have loved to seen those two guys, the outdoor American record holder in the 3000 versus the indoor American record holder in the 3000 and see them go at it. You know, Nagus is stepping up in distance. Fisher would be stepping down. It would be such an incredible match to watch. And I also would love to see Grant Fisher run at Worlds. I mean, yes, he's he was fourth in the 10K. He was fifth in the Olympics uh, in the 10K and fourth in 2022. And so we know he's on like, he's just on that cusp of meddling. But I, again, I wish I could, I just wish he would go run it and get a little bit more experience. I understand all of the rationale, just to be totally clear. He <laughs> wants to practice the rounds and then he has to go, he's going to go run the sound running meet, I believe, and run the 10K there. So I understand everything about it, but I just thought, Oh my God. Like, you know, I'm watching new goose race and I'm like, this could have been so epic to have these two guys head to head. We've been deprived a really good race, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel cheated as a fan. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. like you see the two times and you're like, Oh, like imagine <laughs> just, yeah. just put them together. Um, wh- okay. This is the next natural question. Then I've taken all your um, choose your own adventure options away. What do you That's think fine. about the the standards? I mean, they've become incredibly fast. We know why. Um, but also like the shoes have gotten better, tech's gotten better, yada, yada. So that's part of it. But also I think originally it was like, if we make these really fast, people will want to rely on the rankings. Thus they have to just race each other more. But to the point we just made, it seems like they're folks are still like, nah, I'm just going to try and chase it instead. What do you think about the new numbers um, and and the system and the rationale behind it? 
So I didn't understand the whole system when I started working for NBC. I was like, what do you mean they can get on ranking? Like, I don't get it. And it was explained to me, which makes sense, which is that the sport has progressed so much in the last, I don't know, eight years or so because of tech, maybe, and especially the last six years, that the standards are like an average of the top times. And they were getting so hard that they kept the standards nice and hard, but they added this ranking system. And that way, if you don't meet the standard, that's okay because we understand how hard they are. But if you race a lot and you'll have a ranking, that's just as good. So that's how it was explained to me. And I was like, okay, I mean, I, that makes sense, right? But it's so hard to follow. And, you know, like we're calling the indoor meet and Colin Hacker gets second in the 3000. We're like, well, we have no idea if he's going. Or Josette Norris or Josette Andrews, sorry now. She got second in the 3000. We're like, well, we hope she's going to get in on her 5,000 meter ranking for the 3000, but we won't know for a week. And it's like, it's so yeah. messy, right? And it and I I miss the days of like, you have the standard or you don't. But I do understand that the standard has gotten so aggressive that they've added this ranking, and but it's, I don't know. I miss the easy old days. What do you think about it all? I, I think it's become so complicated and just unnecessary. I mean, I understand the times being crazy aggressive um, and I understand wanting to get people to race head to head, but I think, and this is probably a super American bias, but like a trials, like a, a Olympic trials in the marathon, like top three should just be a, a great enough value. Like in Atlanta, they made it like this gold label race. So if you right. finish in the top three, you were going to have enough ranking points to qualify automatically. Like I think if a country proves in some way or some form, and that's probably the part that needs to be ironed out. Like if this country is earned three spots, um, then the, the trials should fill the spots. Like okay, right. the U S has been, great from 5,000 to marathon, they've as a country scored enough points in rankings to get three spots in every distance event. Yeah. Um, in the hurdles, they are good enough as a country to get three spots. Oh, like in the pole vault and the vertical jumps, they've only got two qualifiers. So maybe the U S can figure out, you know, like that should be it versus like an individual, like, this person has it, this person doesn't, they finished here. So they're not going to get to go. But so like my eyes cross and I just like, right, right. I don't care anymore. Like I just want to watch a race and feel like there's value in placing in the top three or yeah. top two for indoors. So they need to figure out a way to, to simplify it so that when you watch these races, even if it is two spots, you go like, okay, like we know the person who finishes in first and second, they're Are going to call it as such and not have to confuse the fans because it's like, well, we want to watch great races, but they're not meaningful. So they're not really great races, even if they are great races. And that gets confusing. I totally agree. At the Olympic trials in 2021, Cole Hawker outkicked Sensuitz to win. And mm -hmm. we had to say on air, we don't know if he's going to the Olympics because he doesn't have a ranking. Like he didn't have a ranking. And so we have no idea. And it two weeks later, it was like, yes, he's officially on the team, but that sucks. And that sucks the what? life out of the excitement of what we just saw, right? And obviously, he deserved to go. He made the final. He finished sixth at the Olympic Games. He deserved to go. But we went from, like, hyping him to being like, well, he'll have to wait. And it's yeah. like, ah. Like, <laughs> it's, like, so crappy. I don't and know so, why I did yeah. that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what the right thing is. Like maybe just loosen the standards a little bit and let's go back to the old way. Or like you said in Atlanta, that was so great because we knew the first three across the line were going because of the way that you had said. Like back then you could have they were different labels of races. I don't even know if that's part of the equation anymore. I was <laughs> <laughs> like that that's crazy, right? I think about the bare minimum. I was like, I need to run two twenty nine twenty nine. Yes. Well, done. <laughs> done. Yeah. It's interesting too, because I think, so we texted a little bit about this, but um, as we understood it, as all the athletes understood it, before the Olympic trials marathon, you could not chase the time after that day, correct? Yes. Right. So at, that's what all the athletes were told. That's what was announced there. You can chase your ranking, but you can't chase the time. And then, I don't know, was it like a few days or a week after the Olympic trials, USATF told Lenny Career that he could, in fact, go chase the standard. And you were like, I don't think it changes the outcome so much. But I was like, 
Maybe it does though. Maybe Zach Panny doesn't feel like he has to make it happen in that moment. Maybe he says, I know I can be top three. I just need to do that. And then I'll go chase the standard later. Um, but what, what are your thoughts on that? First of all, do you think it would have changed the race at all? I don't think so. And I know, like I, I say that, I don't, I don't mean, I don't know the conversation, like at least you can have the conversation, right? Like we're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. Talking to Zach, Zach said, he told me, he was like, I wasn't trying to run the standard. I was just trying to make the team. So like knowing that mindset, you're like, okay, but there's still like the pressure of like, well, if I can get two things done today, like, and I'm on the pace and this is going well, like, yeah, you keep chipping away at it. So I'm sure that's in the back of his mind. I think I kind of like that USATF was like, yo, we're lighting the fire under your ass. Like, get it done, guys. Like, get it done. And I think a lot of people were like, well, it's not really fair because it didn't know, they didn't know, and it could have changed the impact of the race. But what they neglect to mention is all the months prior, mm. in all the races prior, in all the other conditions available, um, that it still hadn't got done. So like, hey, dude, if we're in the procrastination crew, like, we're putting a hard deadline on this shit. Like, right. let's fucking get it done. And then afterwards, it's like, all right, we got our three guys. Like, let's give him every chance possible to make this team. Like, I I get the flip-flop of the rules. Um, they did say, like, you could race another marathon. So, like, in theory, Lenny could go race to improve his ranking. And if he was, like, oh, in better marathon shape than half marathon shape, like, he could go race another marathon. So, like, why wouldn't his time count? But his rank, like, we're just right. going to with the rank. So it was very, like, and I think the whole thing was super vague across the board. Um, but again, that to me, that's just like another reason to put the fire under the ass and be like, just get it done before the deadline, please. Yeah. And then and I, we'll worry about it. I agree with you there. I feel like you should have it at the conclusion of the meet. Like again, even on track, like y- you should have it and we should know. But I, I, what I don't like is the flip-flopping of USATF. I don't like them telling athletes one thing. And then once it's done and over with being like, actually, you know what? You can go chase that time. Like it's this is nothing against career. It's just like I just don't like that. So it's so like what are the rules? Right. The rules are we have to have it on on the on D Day. Okay. Yeah. Mance and Young got that done. So we know it can get done, right? And but then to like later be like, well, you know what? We feel bad. I don't like that. Stick with one I, or the I other. Agree. I the thing that's funny to me is like they do this all the time. Yeah, I know, I know. Because, like, in, in 2009, Daegu, like, I think I was, like, seventh at the U.S. championships, and but only two people had the standard. And Angel Bazzari was chasing. She didn't get it. And then I think it was, I was seventh. Lauren was, like, 12th or something. I don't know what the placing was. It was Yeah, this is 2011. And, uh, London, uh, <laughs> Lauren. And... Um, we both ran the London diamond league and we both hit the standard. So they're like, Oh, well actually like we're going to try to maximize our spots on the team. So like we're extending this to you, even though we said you couldn't chase the standard unless you were top three or finisher didn't hit it. So like they, it's just wishy-washy. And so I think they're always trying to maximize the number of qualifiers, which I agree with. Um, but also again, it's like, say that up front so that right. we'll have all the options and can make their race plan accordingly. And that's with all things at USATF, like just get organized and be transparent. <laughs> right. The transparency piece is the hardest part. Yeah. Really. Yeah. We struggle. <laughs> it's not that hard. It really shouldn't be that hard. It really shouldn't be that hard. Um. Okay. So this is, I'm going to reach back into the grab bag unless you have anything else to add there. No, uh, just that I wish we could simplify it. I understand the ranking to aid because the times have gotten so hard, but maybe just lessen the times a tiny bit so it's not so confusing. That's all I wish. But no one gives a shit what I say. So why do you like? Why do you? Why are they being so like? Are they worried about numbers being too great? Like, why can't well, that's they just- the other thing? Yes, they're trying to reduce field size. So no. they're trying to like the the marathon field size is going down to I think eighty um, at this Olympics, and in the past they've been able to have so much more than that, like one twenty or one ten or something. So it's like in an effort to sort of make the field sizes smaller, at least on the marathon side, they really tightened all of the time qualifying standards and stuff. So. 
I, I also do get like trying to have a realistic field size, like even at this world indoor, I don't know why they're not doing a prelim in the 3000 in the past they have, it's a straight final. And so you can only put so many people on an indoor track and have it be safe. So the field size is only 15. Well, that's a very, very, very small field size. And that's why the 3000 time was so hard. Like Cole Hawker, I don't even think he got it when he ran 805 in the two mile, right? So it's like, it's such a hard standard. So, but I get it. Like if you're only going to let 15 people line up, you need to make sure it's the top 15 people in the world. But again, only a few people ended up getting it. So <laughs> what do you they think still have to go down the list. Like, do you think the move to the smaller field sizes is better? Like I get, I sort of get the track. I think the rounds are important. I think you learn a lot from the rounds. And I think that's some of the value of indoors. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Worlds and figure out back-to-back -back days. And this is what, like, this is great prep. So it incentivizes going to Worlds if that's something you're into. Or you're like, I'm not doing all that shit to make a final so there's ups and pros and cons to it. Uh, I I think, I don't know, I think it should somewhat mimic the outdoor track. Yeah. The marathon, the road, like, is how narrow is the street in Paris? <laughs> like, I know. I'm working with her. Like, I, I don't see the point in being super exclusive when it's an open road. There's no overlap. Like, I, right. I don't. Of all the events, it's like, so what if 100 people qualify? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. That one I don't get per se. Right. Yeah. Anything well, I'm not going to pretend like I get it. I have no idea. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It's a marathon. Do you think that, do you, do you like the rounds in indoors or are you like, no, this is great because it's more exciting to I just. I don't like a straight final of 15. No yeah. other event has a straight final of 15. The 800 yeah. has rounds. The 1500 has rounds. The 60 has rounds. 400 has rounds. Everybody else is doing rounds. So why are we, the 60 hurdles are doing rounds. I, I just am like, is it really that painful and that difficult to have two extra heats of the 3K on the first day where it's literally 20 minutes at this level? You can get the men and women done in 20 minutes. Like, well, no, it would be 40 because it'd be two heats. But whatever. I'm just like, that's part of the sport. Right. And that's part of, you know, that's the other thing is it's like, just what you were saying, if you get to an Olympic Games, you're going to, unless you're running the 10,000 or the marathon, you're going to have a round. And so why aren't we setting athletes up to like know that that's the case and be good? I mean, you go to the Olympics, you have three rounds of the 1500, you have three rounds of the 800, you have two rounds of the 5000. That's how it is. And and th that's never going to change because they, they'll always have to get the field size down small enough for a final. So why are we worried about it indoor? Why are we going to straight final indoors? Why are we only letting 15 people? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Like think about all the events. There's no 5,000 here. There's no 10,000 here. So if you're a distance athlete, all you have is the 3,000. Right? Yeah. So why are we making it even harder? Like instead of 32 people qualifying, we're only letting 15 come. I don't know. Are they trying to send them like, hey, do world cross? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's too cool here to do cross country. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I don't know what the rationale is, but um, I do know that because it's a straight final, that's why Laura Muir is running. So like on the one hand, that's cool. We get to see a multi-time medalist run the 3000 who wasn't going to run it. But I don't know. I just feel like it, it leads, it leaves out more people and it leaves out the experience that the athletes need for when it actually comes to the Olympic games. Yeah. 15 is crazy. It will be interesting to see the full fields and like with the standards and how, I mean, that's the thing. If you're like on the cusp of being good enough to actually get there and you're like, Oh, I got bumped in. And then you're like, Oh, it's an eight person field and <laughs> there's 40 seconds. And then there's me. I mean, I qualified, but like, do I right. really want to be here? Like, I know it's right. not a development thing, but it's like opportunities are good. And then I was kind of thinking about like the, the uh, British team, like being so selective with who they even send because of yeah. budget stuff or whatever. Like, well, if you're not going to meddle, I'm not going to waste our money on you. Like, I just think long-term for the sport, that's so hard. So, right. So think about that. Tell me what you think about that, because that's what that, that's what the UK has decided to do. Like, if we don't think you're a metal prospect, we're not going to fund you. We're not going to send you to the championship. Um, I think personally, this is a huge mistake and you're killing <laughs> your future because they need to go. They need to go and try the rounds. They need to get last. They need to go and get motivated, see how it works. You can't expect someone to go. I mean, it happens, but you can't expect someone to go into the Olympic Games and just win a gold medal the first time when they've never experienced anything like that. So I think 
it's totally, totally ridiculous. But I'm curious. I think you think the same thing, but same thing. tell me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think for the roads, for sure, right? Like, again, there's so much room. Like, if you don't want to pay for them, like, maybe a sponsor picks it up or whatever. If an athlete's super proud, like, if I made a world team and, like, Nike was like, or USATF was like, we're not sending you, you suck. But if you want to pay for yourself, you can go. I'd be like, I, I will find the money. Like, I yeah. don't think that's great. For I love that you just had a Freudian slip, by the way. What did I say? <laughs> you said Nike for USATF. <laughs> yeah. you, knew I was like, you, you knew what I was talking about. No, you corrected yourself, but I was like, oh, that's so funny to me, personally. You know, we're wearing our uniform, which is going to last. Like, I'll pay for it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, I would like to yeah. be like, I want this experience. This is totally. why I stay in the sport. And like it, those moments are like good for morale and – um, they make it worth your time to be in the sport. And then there's obviously experience aspect to it. So I think it's, I agree, it's a huge mistake. And then obviously on the track, there's the limiting of the lanes, but it's the same thing. Like right. you got to go and take your licks and learn and then improve. And and it, that's like, I don't know. I think that's what creates the depth for your country. And yeah, look at you as distance running. Like, I remember when I started and it was like, oh, I'm on a world championship team for the 20K and I finished like fifth from last. And now like you couldn't even, like if you're not going to be in top 20, like you're not on the US team, like how good yeah. are you now? Um, so it's, I mean, but you got to incentivize people to want to be there. Totally. I agree. All right. Well, we're rewriting the rules here. So on that <laughs> note, this is a good segue. Um, reaching into the grab bag. <laughs> um, new long jump rules what do you think about the new long jump rules do you okay, talk so about them? i do, do want to talk about it yeah so it's they're gonna try it out i don't know where they're gonna try it out but essentially world athletics has decided that the long jump takes too much time <laughs> too much time to measure it's not exciting enough for the fans and and there were a, a third of the athletes fouled at uh, the world championships last year um, so a third of the jumps didn't count. And so why are we wasting jumps? And so they want to make this new takeoff zone, which is like a big takeoff zone. And wherever you take off from it, it counts. And then they're going to measure from where you took off to where you land. And so instead of measuring at the board, no matter how f- close you are to the board or away from the board, like they're going to measure it wherever you actually take off. And that's going to be the jump. And I'm not educated enough on the long jump, so I chose to like go and listen to what people who actually long jump had to say about it, Ooh. and they all hate it, right? I'm... They hate it. And so I'm curious on on your take too, because I do feel like in a weird way, I understand. So basically, like the long the long jumpers that I've listened to are like, this creates an entirely new sport. Part of the long jump is nailing that takeoff zone. And and now it's just a free for all. Like part of what was difficult about our event, part of what made it special is not only do you have to jump far, but you have to nail this takeoff and they don't, they don't like it. I think it just needed a rebrand. Like they needed to call it like the precision. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, cause then it's like, you have to be precise and I think it was Tim Hutchins was like, well, no, it's the long jump. It's like whoever can jump the farthest. That's what we're measuring, right? It's like, who cares where you are on the board? I just want to know who can jump the longest, which I get it. But you're right. That's a totally different sport. They just needed a marketing team to come in and go, this is the precision jump. It's no longer a mm-hmm. long jump. Indoor track is now short track. Yeah. Precision jump. Long well, jump funny. Go somewhere else. <laughs> it was funny because uh, Leroy, Leroy Burrell was saying, okay, you're creating a whole n- new thing. So what does that mean? Like in the sprints, they can just get out of the blocks whenever they want. We'll just measure it. Like we'll just time it no matter what, like whenever, whenever they, want. they want it. Yeah. Or if distance runners spend some time in lane two, then we're going to we're gonna measure that and subtract it from their time. And I actually really liked that comparison. He said part of the long jump is the skill of nailing the board at the right place. And then – I was listening to some other athletes and they were saying they're worried about cheating. They said it'll be a lot easier to cheat because they'll be able to say, no, I took off from there. I'm going to argue it, especially at like the lower, lo- lower levels, mm-hmm. but they can argue where it was, argue where this is. And, and, and another thing um, they were saying was this actually steals the excitement of the competition because right now they can mark where the leading mark is. Yeah, it doesn't it. matter where you take off on the board. That's still the leading mark. And now you lose that. 
And it will take more time because you have to measure every <laughs> jump, right. you know? So um, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, that's cool. But then when I listened to people actually do the long jump, I was like, oh, that's not cool at all. That's a terrible that. yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just so aggressively reshaping the sport. Like, I think that precision really matters. I think that if you're, I can't imagine being like in the heart of my career and being like, oh, I got to figure out this new right event because this is way different than what I was doing before. Um, and I, I'm going to find out if I'm good at this other thing and I might be looking for a new job soon uh, based on the rules. But what do you, what do you think about in general, like tweaking track and field rules, which is such a, like, I mean, it's a simple sport and we know the rules and they're very classic, but tweaking those things, to create engagement or create excitement or like make the sport more entertaining. Do you take away from the classic things or is, is it like, we just got to figure out how to make this more interesting and sell what we have better. Yeah. Well, I would say, first of all, that falls on people like me and you and other people working on a broadcast. Like we should be able to sell what we're seeing and we should be able to make people excited about it. Um, I don't, I mean, Look, I'm a curmudgeon. I like things <laughs> to stay the same. Everyone knows this about me, obviously. So I don't want anything that's going to steal the basic heart or principle of an event. I'm not opposed to pacing lights and things that make it more exciting for the viewers to watch. But when you start pulling away fundamentals from an event, I do have a problem with that. What about you? I agree fully. Fully agree. Okay. Since we're on the topic of rules, I've mapped okay. this up. You're going to fucking love this. Okay, okay. So we're on the topic of rules. Um, Katir, officially banned. Anti-doping yes. rule. Um, this isn't a positive test. We don't know about substance, yada, yada. This is a whereabouts ban. What did you feel about it when it came in? Uh, surprised. Uh, break down the the ruling because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, and we, we texted about this a little bit where you're like, oh, this freaking moron. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. first, you know, we first found out that he was provisionally suspended and he said he could prove that he was where he said he was. Um, and then I read the the report. I mean, it was what, a week later that he was officially suspended for two years. And it's just, <laughs> if you're going to lie, make sure your receipts match up, right? Like, again, this is not saying he's a doper, but I am saying he, he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Like, he he said his fiance wasn't feeling well, so he booked a ticket to go see her, and it and he booked it the day that they showed up. And so they said, show us the plane tickets. Well, it turned out he bought the plane tickets two days before, then he, there was another one where he said he couldn't log on to the app. It wasn't working. Um, but then they went back and they were able to see that there was no server failure at all during that time. So it would have been better if he had just, for me, if he just accepted the sanction right away and was just like, yeah, no, I messed up. But he was like, I'll be able to prove it. It's on them, not me. Um, and not to say that there aren't, I'm sure there are, nothing is perfect all the time. But if you go through and read the report, go through and read the report, it's very clear that he wasn't where he said he was three different times. And then he lied about it. Mukhtar, do not murder anybody. They're going to find you like that. <laughs> <laughs> this, watch some true crime TV, some podcasts. Yeah. Like, you got to learn a few of the tricks to yeah. cover your backs. You are very it's, good it's, at running. You are not very good at lying. That's not, that's not the worst thing, right? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. I mean, eh. um, yeah. yeah, no, I, th I did think that was kind of funny. You're like, what a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Yeah. So you're, we're getting into some rapid fire because we're getting low on time. And you're going to love this transition. Okay. <laughs> it's your official ban. What do you feel about sports bra bans being too tight? Did you see the recent study? <laughs> I did. And I just want to shout out Shalea Kip, who went to the University of Colorado, who's an Olympian. She made the team in 2012 in the steeplechase. And she's just one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. And so she did a research study on sports bra bands and do they like restrict your breathing? 
And it, it does. 100%. And I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, you put on that bra that's too tight and you're like, oh, I don't think I can wear this one. <laughs> you hear the same spot. <laughs> but yeah, my it, yeah, you're like, oh, God, I can't breathe. But it really, truly is scientifically proven. And I know it seems like, of course, but think about that. We women, we always have to be wearing a sports bra, always, unless you're really lucky and then you can just wear a singlet. But like, that's very rare that you have Social nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, and um, so yeah, the the it was very conclusive, right? Yeah, it looked really straightforward to me. I felt very um, justified in my loose singlet decision making because, yeah. for, like, to me, like the too many layers, it just feels so restricting. Um, so that's part of why I wear the looser singlet. And then I can, I mean, look, the sports bra for me is again, like mostly <laughs> for social reasons, not doing much beyond that. So like mine's not super restrictive and I feel like that's a, that's a win for me. I feel like I've been doing it right all these years. So I was pretty proud about that. Um, and to see scientific evidence there. It's great. I thought it was cool. And also like, how has no one ever looked into this before? But then it made me start thinking about, in, in Orlando, the women are wearing tight compressed compression, right, up top. The men are wearing free-flowing singlets. There's nothing pressing in on their chest. So I'm not even talking about, like, the breathing restriction anymore. I'm just thinking about your core body temperature. You know, I don't know if you experienced this. Like, I can, I can run in anything as long as my core is warm. It can be freaking freezing yeah. out. And as long as I am warm in my core, I can have no sleeves on, no shorts on. You know what I mean? I'm serious. Like Sorry, as long as this is warm. <laughs> no, I mean, I meant to say I could be wearing shorts. Okay. Um, and so it really makes me think, well, if, if like in Orlando, when it's warm or in LA, when we ran or Rio where you ran and it's hot, isn't that making you more hot? So I just posed the question and I haven't seen the research, but Gabby Ricker wrote, yes, it's true. It does yeah. make you more, which of course it makes sense. But then it makes me think like, why are we innovating on this? Totally. Great opportunity there. Yeah. I mean, that someone in general, just, I mean, it's like the, there's such a, an amazing space to work with and like do something new um, that, I mean, I think we can all agree temperatures are on the rise so let's make some cooling fabrics. And yeah, like I think sports bras, like we've done a lot. And I think that's like been a thing for Brooks. Like they did a survey. It was like, would you rather, um, if you had to pick between sports bras or shoes, which one would you go without? And like 98% of women were like, well, the shoe, like I would go without the shoes, you know, like it's such an right. important piece of right. equipment. And it's like, we haven't really updated it or, you know, remodeled it in a long time. So I think that's a great space that um, brands could be working on. If I you're agree. I, I just think about how no one's ever really talked about this before. It seems so obvious. Of course, it makes you overheat quicker. Of course, it pinches your breathing. I remember Sal's are, had these, I think they were called like recipe vests and you wear this vest and pull it really tight and then go run and it, it would supposedly help your lungs get better because they couldn't fully expand. Oh, That's what a fucking tight sports bra does all the time. Like, you have one of those. <laughs> like my lungs can't get any bigger. Okay. They're restricted all the time. So yeah, it's, it is interesting. And like, I don't have, I have a really, really, um, huge rib cage. So I, I feel this because I'm constantly need a smaller sports bra because I don't have a lot of girls, but I have a massive <laughs> rib cage. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, I'm, I, I, I'm in a good place now, but like, I used to struggle with like what bra to wear, like, cause I, I don't want it to pinch me, but I also, yeah. Anyway, if I want my littleness to be supported, it needs to be in a smaller bra. So it just like blows my mind that. This simple post by Shalaya Kip of this research study she did, I'm like, how? Wait, it's 2024. How are we not dealing <laughs> with this? <laughs> this is crazy. That was pretty funny. Um, I wore, you know, say they say nothing new on race today, but I wore a brand new sports bra. Oh, yeah, we actually need to talk about that. Okay, tell, tell us story. about this. You were telling this story. Everybody wants to know about it. So I can't it's believe we didn't discuss great. it. If you got yeah. to the end or near the end of the pod, you are going to be rewarded. <laughs> with the story about my stupidity. <laughs> so we were in Orlando, we were, uh, had the Airbnb, and we were about 45 minutes to an hour away. And the day we did the Brooks event, 
I like I texted Garrett an hour ahead of time and I was like, I'm going to be five minutes late because we've been sitting in traffic like all day. We were going the opposite direction to go to the house we had to pick up the dogs. I was grabbing my uniform for uniform check and they were going to come back for the event um, and then just throw stuff in the hotel room and then decide if we were going to drive back to the Airbnb or not, whatever. So I grab all my stuff for my uniform check. Like anything with a big Brooks logo on it is going in the bag. Boom, 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 throw it all in. So we're rushing. We had like three minutes. I'm like, get the dogs, throw the stuff, like all of the things. And then we take <laughs> off, we go back, do the Brooks event, go to the hotel. I leave my stuff for uniform jet check. I filled up my bottles. And then I was like, let's just go back to the Airbnb because these elevators are bananas. There's too many people here that want to talk. Mm-hmm. It's very runnery. Mm-hmm. So we laughed. <laughs> and then Josh in the morning was like, cool, I got your uniform and your bottles and I'll take care of it. And I was like, great. And so then I came in for the tech meeting. All my stuff's already there. And whatever. Ryan's hanging out with the dogs. He's at the Brooks thing, meeting friends. Finish the tech meeting, go to the room, putting my bib together, like doing the po- picture for Instagram. <laughs> Getting ready for the race. I'm like, okay, I'm an old pro. And sometimes I'll do the photo where I just show, throw, throw all the shit in the bag. And then I take a photo and I'm like, oh, old pro, I promise it's all there. Like some people lay it all out. I'm like, nah, I promise it's all there. So I was putting the, this is a new singlet and I was putting it on. And I was doing the bib and I was like, oh, I don't have a sports bra. Oh, Like my favorite, like I have like one style that I wear and I have like 17 of them. I have like a permanent tan line on my back. <laughs> Like they fit just right. So I text Ryan and I'm like, you're at the Brooks thing. Can you find me a sports bra? <laughs> and he was like, oh, are you kidding me? So he asked Garrett and then Garrett like made a deal with all the, not like a, a game out of it with all the reps. He's like, we need this size sports bra and whoever gets it here quickest is the winner. So Ryan brought like seven back. And I was like, they're all so different from what I would normally use, but they're great. Great so sports. tell me the That's difference sports. between the bra you used versus the bra you normally use. Um, the one I picked was um, the material's much different. Like it is thicker and mm. it came up really high, mm-hmm. but it was strappy in the back, which I like. Um, I feel like the ones that I have, I really like cause they're, they're most, they're like a light t-shirt at this point. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Just like cover and that's what there's not like a support element. So it's right. like, you know, when we're talking about this lightweight, no restrictive nature, like those are my go to. Yeah. And then the singlet and you're good. Um, but this one was like, you know, it was more technical. I feel like I could grow into it and have some support. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Gosh, if that was my thing. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Probably not. The girl can dream. <laughs> you can't be good at everything. Dreams. <laughs> this new bra right now <laughs> i worked out at the gym before i came here that the back is open do you think that that would make you less heated here i'm going to show you Hold this on. is going to blow up for you too, but okay <laughs> okay see oh yeah 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 like mine's real like it's just like some little small straps but uh, yeah i, I wonder if that, that would help like more space more yeah, just some like breathing room on your back i almost did the like cut the jersey weird thing but like i was a like crappy like a crop top no but just like the holes in it oh know? the holes yeah yeah, yeah. And then it was like it was kind of cold in the morning when we got like i was like i'll just look like an asshole like, it's no not even, it's not even hot and she cut her jersey <laughs> it's like 58 like what an idiot did you wear a jersey with holes in it in rio i did yeah i mean see? it's super effective i like it i just didn't think it was warm enough and then the last lap i was like ah oh, should i cut Uh, cut the holes cut the holes okay so we're done with this topic and we're done done with sports bras they're gone forever um normally we would do a top five but i just i'm i feel like we're feeling spicy so i'm gonna um i think we should do a top five pet peeves oh geez like the um and you know, listen. If uh, farmer's dog, if farmer's dog wants to come in as a sponsor, we can call these yeah. the pet peeves. The oh, pet I love that! Peeves. Do you hear right? that, farmer's dog? It's we a both natural have natural plug. Come yeah. on in. We'll talk about your product. 
my dog Atlas love farmer's dog added like a year to his life, I swear. But um, I'm buying you time for pet peeves. I'm going to start. Okay. I'll start. I don't even have any. I just thought of this. So um, I'm nervous. My number one pet peeve, and this is not time specific. This is like all the time. Uh, people who chew with their mouth open. Mm, worse. Like Ryan, and I love him, but he's like a loud chewer. And also like once a month. It's especially loud. Like, do we notice it? I don't think it's him, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Pet peeve one. Okay, that was a good one. Um, I don't know. I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, since I am feeling a little spicy. Yes. One of my pet peeves is when people let me know what they didn't like about the broadcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm not in a time machine. I can't go back and fix that for you. So, I mean, like, yeah, sure, there's stuff that people suggest that I'm like, yeah, no, that would have made sense. But um, I really don't like the snarky comments from people who work in the running space who have never been in an actual live (laughs) booth. (laughs) Give me some names. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, whatever. It's like a part of the job. And I'm sure I used to do it before I started working, but it's really hard to be on live TV and to get everything right. And it mistakes happen. And yeah, you don't have to let me know. Trust me. I'm hard enough on myself. I know when I messed up. Thank you so much. That's the biggest thing is like, you're, all of us are like our own biggest critics and like, even the things that they don't call out, I'll be like, I paused for so long there. (laughs) Oh, so awkward, you know, and then someone would be like, I didn't, I didn't even notice that. You know? Right. <laughs> it's right. so small, but every little thing you're analyzing while you're yeah. analyzing. <laughs> yeah. I like that it's one. It's a stressful job. All right. There you go. All right. I'm going to um, go with comments as well. I don't like when you post information and somebody will ask a question that all you had to do was read to the <laughs> bottom of the post or even the middle of the post and the answer would reveal itself. Um, yes. And sometimes it's just an accident. So there's that, but then there's like other folks or, you know, it's just a habit of being like, will you tell me what time this event is at? Well, I did. <laughs> yes. Right there. So I totally you agree. Read to the end. And then if you still can't figure it out, you know, I'll probably point you in the right direction. Be like, it's right about halfway. Yeah. But I don't answer those. I never answer them. Okay. So this isn't going to count as one, but I'm just going to like support that and say that I, I post all of the anti-doping bans on my, my, what was known, formerly known as Twitter. And I post a link to the ruling <laughs> <laughs> and people will always be like, well, I don't know if that's really true or did he even have a chance to defend himself? You can read the whole report. You can read it. <laughs> and then you don't have to ask me. It's right there. So yeah, but that just goes with that one. Okay. Since we're talking about pet peeves, I thought of something that I'm obsessed with my dog, Luna. Okay. okay. She's totally wild. She's out of control. And then at night, she's super cuddly. But this dog weighs 17 pounds. And the way she body slams me in the middle of the night is really <laughs> ridiculous. She shakes the whole bed. And so I'm just going to say that one of my pet peeves is when my animals just jarringly shove themselves up against me. It, it, there's no need for it. You guys are little. Just cuddle in there. Just to go with, you know, the whole farmer's thing. I like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't, I feel no sympathy for you. River is 60 <laughs> pounds-ish and he likes to body slam and he like turns around and like boom, like in the middle of the oh, night. Yeah. He can take you out. He's a big, like he's a little guy. He's gangly, but he's got he's big. You know, yeah. he's like it's gonna be a sixty, and he's only gonna get bigger, so he needs to soften up a little bit. Like so, yeah. Um, all right, so last one. Um. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna go this, and this is. I don't always do this, but this is fresh on my mind because last time I was talking about things that I like and I was picking things on my desk, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, someone replied with, I love lamp. And it was kind of appropriate. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with IT technical issues. Like yeah. I've been working on this microphone thing for so long 
And that sounds ridiculous. Why can't you just figure it out? But I've, I'm one by one, like trying every cable per episode. So I bought a new, I bought a new box. I think I thought this is, I thought there might be moisture in my old box. So I was like, that box has been broken, but it wasn't the moisture. It didn't break the box. Um, So we've tried cables and I just can't get it to work. So next, uh, next stop is new, some, a couple more new cables, maybe a new computer. Um, and I will say I'm doing phenomenally on not buying new clothes. So like, Oh, wow. Good job. So you have the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's for well, look, I've been frustrated for you because you always come on and you're <laughs> like, mur, mur, and then it goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and you so always, excited like, get on early and you're super excited. <laughs> and then we're always like, no, no, we can't hear you. No, Des, no. Sign back in. Log, log back in. Log back in. Log out and come back. Now, turn your computer off. So I have also been feeling bad for you. But you know what's going to happen? As soon as yours works, mine won't. A hundred percent. It's so true. Yeah. IT difficulties. Kudos to the IT teams out there. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, thank you. But fix, fix as a setup, please. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're get it solved. Um, all right. So I think that's a wrap for the show. I'm super excited because I've been dying of thirst, but my uh, can of water is super large. So I'm going to take a sip as soon as this shuts down. Have a good one, guys.